Because if he goes down, the carrier goes over him, chews him up, the propeller grinds him up, mm. it's really a bad situation. Well, anyway, uh, he did stagger on and finally got airborne, but I'm thinking, if this is an advanced pilot, what am I doing out here? You know, I'm, 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 this really scared me. And then we had a student cut in half in a crash, just actually severed, blood all in the, um, in the compartment in the, in the flight seat. And that was our first night flight. They took us on a bus and drove us out to the, to the airfield to fly night, first night. And they drove us by this plane, and all the cadets got out, up on the, looked out the window and saw this. And it scared us a little bit, but we thought, well, we'll go ahead and do our night flight. What the hell? So we got out there, and at night, the SNJ sits back. It was a, a, not a tricycle, but a tail dragger. You know, the wheel was way down in the back. And, and you had to, uh, when you were taxiing to see what was going on up ahead of you, especially at night, you had to go back and forth like that so you could look around the engine. And uh, so I was doing that, and I was doing that, and I was following the exhaust of the guy in front of me. And all of a sudden, the exhaust disappeared. I couldn't figure it out. And uh, what he had done is he had run up his engine a little bit, and then, so for some reason, maybe habit, what they had trained us to do, he reached down and he pulled up his gear while he's taxiing. <laughs> gear, bang, he came down. I couldn't figure out what was going on. It was so dark out there, I called the tower. I told them I couldn't find the guy, and they sent out a truck, and that's what had happened here. So here I am. You know, I think I, I know a little bit about flying, but I really was just a, such a rank beginner. I, I didn't know anything about anything. So uh, that's about it on things that bring up adrenaline pumps for you. But going back to flying airships, we went to Glencoe, Georgia, and uh, that's where we uh, went through our flight training after our carrier landings and stuff, and uh, we had a, a lieutenant that was in charge of the basket. We were going to go on a morning flight in a uh, free balloon, which was because in 1925, the front end of the Shenandoah, well, I'm not sure of the name of the rigid, had fallen off, and the commander that was up there took charge of that piece of the airship and free ballooned it for 20 miles, landed safely, and saved the 12 men that were aboard. So then now everybody in the Navy has to know how to free balloon, and this was 25 and this was 53, so it's about 30 some years between. So they put us in the basket, there's about four or five of us greenies in there, it's about that big, and we've got a lieutenant who seemed to know what he was talking about. But you never know about lieutenants. So he, uh, he said, uh, release the bag. We had about six enlisted men holding the bag down, and off it floated up into the air, and we sit there for a while, and then the wind picked us up, moved us along, and we were just barely moving, and we got over a field. Now I see, I remember now that the enlisted men were laughing at us when we got launched. I couldn't figure it out. And then I found out later this lieutenant is a crazy man. And I, I hadn't known that. So he's in charge, though. We're in since he's a lieutenant. So uh, he says, uh, we get over this field. It's a big field. And there's a guy out in the middle of it hoeing. And the lieutenant leans over and says, have you been good? <laughs> and the guy looks around the field. You can see, you know, he thought God was, but he didn't know that God was a lieutenant. <laughs> So he was really concerned, you know, oh my God, uh, uh, where is God? And he looks on, there wasn't anything in the field. And then the, the lieutenant took mercy on him and said, uh, look up here, sinner. And the guy looked up and then it was all everything. So he, I think he waved to us, maybe with one finger again, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that worked out okay. So we're drifting along. Now the wind's picking up. Maybe we're going 20, 25 knots through the tops of the trees. I don't think they would have launched us if they'd have known how bad the wind was going to be. And this lieutenant drops down into the tops of the trees. He loves this. He loves banging into these trees and just bang, bang, rattle, rattle. We're in hanging on for dear life, all these little greeny ensigns, just really petrified as what's going on. And he's laughing, and then he says, Dra throw out the drag rope. And the drag rope is a rope from maybe here to the other end of the building that when you come down in a, in a bag, the weight is gathered up on the ground of the rope and it slows your descent. So that was, it made sense, but to throw it out into the forest and have it tangled with the trees behind you, we were jerking all over the place in the, in the cart. 
and we've, we're moving fast now. We're moving 20, 25 knots through the trees. This thing is jerking us around. All of a sudden, a beautiful two-story house. I don't know where it came from, what it was doing out there, but it was right in our, right in our path. And the, the, uh, the, the lieutenant says, well, uh, uh, all the sand off. So we're throwing some bags of sand over to try and raise us up, because we were going right through the second story window there. And we got the sand off, the bag came up a little bit, and we just skimmed the roof by about that much. But he had forgotten about the drag rope <laughs> hanging behind us. And it starts snaking over the roof and wrapped some way around a, a chimney. Oh, no. <laughs> and we got to the end of the rope and the chimney just exploded. Oh, I don't know how that happened. I don't, I don't know whether there was ever a court martial on that or... <laughs> I think the guy should have probably sued the Navy for at least a, a chimney. But there were some odd people in the Navy. <laughs> but not you, Admiral. It's those other guys. All those other guys. <laughs> so, uh, I told you that it was longer than a football field and taller than a seven-story building. Our airships from ZP-3. This is a model of it. Goodyear gave us all a copy of that. That was nice of them. I don't know whether you can see it or not. It's awfully tiny. Uh, the top part is a uh, height finder. Uh, you could crawl up through the bag if you wanted to. I never did it. It was too dangerous up there. And uh, then, uh, then you can see the car down below. And it was all held onto the car was held onto the bag by catenary curtains and steel cables. So it was hard to keep the balance of, the, of that uh, whole thing and keep it in balance. So uh, there was uh, uh, one, one of my watches, I thought it was interesting, we, were, uh, we had launched the airship and uh, then we all go back in for coffee. There's probably 50 on the ground crew, it was a little windy and the guy had gotten off and he's flying and all of a sudden a, 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 we have tanks in those things, huge gasoline tanks that were you know this big inside the car and uh, for some reason maybe we'll blame it on Goodyear the bottom of the tank dropped out and the gasoline flushed into the car and so I mean it's now it's a floating bomb and the captain, smart guy uh, threw all the electrical power off immediately so now he's got the engines but he doesn't have any controls. He can't put the engines in reverse to land or do anything like that. So he's flying around trying to get somebody on the ground to get their attention. We didn't wear parachutes. You couldn't wear a parachute. You had a knife to cut through the neoprene, but you didn't have parachutes. So he flies around. He's dropping stuff on the ground. Finally, somebody get, picks something up, goes to the CO of the base, full-on emergency. Everybody shows up now to, to land this airship. I'm the junior officer of the watch. Maybe I'm an ensign. Maybe I'm a JG, but I'm... Nothing in this world. <laughs> Nothing. So the, the, the lieutenant's in charge. He's got the watch, so he's got to land this thing. A whole bunch of captains from the base showed up. And then they started looking around, and I think this is where their mind worked. And Admiral, you'll have to tell me if this is true or not. Some of those captains uh, said, man, I'm the senior officer here. This could be a catastrophic situation. Damn, I think I've got some work to do in the office. And they left. And pretty soon it was just him and I because we had to watch. It was very disquieting to say the least. <laughs> so we're trying, we got 150 men up at that end of the, uh, of the circle, this, this huge uh, asphalt circle. And the airship could land in any direction, you know, into the wind. So we had all these crew members up there, a couple of hundred. And they were to just tug the line and slow it down a little bit because he couldn't put it in, in reverse and then he would land and then we would get control of it and put it on the mast and then the fire trucks would come out well some of the enlisted men at the other end were going to stop it by themselves and all of a sudden they were taking 20, 30 foot steps because the airship was still moving pretty fast and some of them fell off and there's a couple of pictures in this about them on the ground and then they finally got control of it, we put it on the mast we shoved in the uh, foam and it filled the car up with foam and they finally got control of it. It didn't explode. The enlisted men, everybody jumped out of the car itself, tumbled onto the ground uh, and just were grateful to be out of that smelly, dangerous situation to say the least. 